Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here. Today I'm discussing Night in the Woods, a narrative-driven indie game developed by Infinite Fall. I'm going to be focusing on a specific topic for this video, so if you're just here to know if I recommend this game or not so you can go be on your merry way, then yes, I do. This game is great, go play it. Here's just a brief summary. The character you play is May, who abruptly drops out of college and goes back to her hometown of Possum Springs. There is more than one theme going on in this game, and they are supported by well-written dialogue, but what I want to discuss isn't a theme, but more of a motif, which is the suggestion of mental illness and how it's portrayed through some of these characters. May is what I would describe as a flawed character. Now, I want to tread lightly here because I do not think that people with mood disorders or mental illnesses are necessarily flawed. So I don't mean that in any derogatory sense of the word, but more so as a game character trait compared to the all-powerful, perfect archetype. It is implied that May has anger issues, something you can learn through various dialogue trees with characters who have known her for a long time. She is also somewhat of a delinquent. Throughout the game, you can choose to hang out with your friends who have mixed feelings about May's return. Her best friend is a fox named Greg, and if you choose to spend time hanging out with him, you'll get cutscenes and character development that show him and May carrying out what they call crimes. Their hangouts usually entail something high energy or would be considered risky, such as knife fighting each other, smashing up a car, and breaking into a building late at night. If you decide to hang out with one of May's other friends, a cynical crocodile named B who has a tumultuous relationship with May, you will get a conversation in which B explicitly states that Greg might have bipolar disorder. That idea is supported by how Greg is written. His extra energy when he sees May has returned, his penchant for dangerous behavior and nearly wired expressions, and his own statement for having ups and downs are all real symptoms of bipolar disorder. Though since you aren't playing as this character and are really only exposed to a couple facets of his life and personality, it's hard to really know whether he has it or not. It is implied, though, I look back at that conversation with B and have a different thought. When I read that line, I actually took it to mean that May is also suffering from bipolar disorder, and that's why the character stated it. I felt that this line was suggesting to us, the player, that we should be considering Greg's behavior and applying it to May's very similar behavior. You often see setups like this in literature and movies, this revelation kind of dialogue where two characters are talking about a heavy topic, and then one of them realizes that it's pertinent to them. Though instead of it being obvious to May, the character, it's more obvious to the player in control of her. And even if it's not specifically bipolar that this is pointing to, this conversation with B still made me consider the behavior of the other characters, especially May since we are controlling her, and if she is supposed to be portrayed as having a mental illness. May shares the desire to engage in risky behavior, especially when she's with Greg, but also a few times when she's hanging out with B. This can be seen when they decide to go to a mall and May shows her how to shoplift. In another cutscene, May takes control of the mall's fountain and starts drenching passing shoppers. She also has a very distinct aversion to authority figures. Her aunt is a cop and their interactions are less than pleasant. She refers to her as Aunt Mall Cop and her feelings are expressed further in a journal she keeps. May also seems to have incredibly low self-esteem when confronting herself in the mirror, lacking any kind of confidence. But her feelings do tend to swing when she is in conversations with other people, especially in a party setting or anywhere that could spark energetic or manic behavior. An important scene is here when May attends her first party since returning home from college. Her ex-boyfriend shows up at the party, someone she had a falling out with, and she cannot seem to handle this situation. Her dialogue changes to become a little odd and disjointed. May keeps drinking in an attempt to quell her anxiety, but that ultimately backfires, leading her to have somewhat of a breakdown in front of everyone. Sometimes it can actually be challenging to play as May because you want there to be a different dialogue option when she's in a confrontation. The dialogue between her and B becomes heated when they speak one-on-one, -on -one, and even more so when May is in a public place with a lot of people. She just cannot seem to hold back her thoughts. The part I struggled with the most is probably when B decides to take May with her to a college party a couple hours away, and it's clear that B wants nothing more than to fit in with these other students as she desires to go to college but is stuck manning a store back at home after her mom died. May keeps interjecting comments about B and how she has no interest in snobby college kids, despite it being very obvious that B does not want May divulging information about her life back in Possum Springs to these potential friends. And this is where it becomes very frustrating. As the player, I want nothing more than to say the right things and encourage my friend, but it's just not an option. You can choose to be an asshole or a little bit less than an asshole. Due to May's conduct, her relationship with B is slightly strained, but becomes stronger 
as they start to be honest about their life with each other. All of these emotions and burdens the character carry are what make them believable. The highs and lows that May suffers are really sad and hit very hard if you, the player, find yourself suffering from similar things. And it does make sense that if May does have a mood disorder, she realistically may not be able to control what she says in social situations. This is where it stays very accurate to life and situations where if you do have a mental illness, it can be hard to function normally. Another thing that led me to think May might suffer from a mood disorder is an instance that happens with her mother one morning. More often than not, she's just trying to urge May to open up about any issues she might be having, but one day, completely out of the blue, she becomes hostile and accusatory. May asks her if she's having another one of her mood swings, implying that this happens at least somewhat frequently and ties in with the mental illness motif presented in the game. Her dad also has issues, though they are not explored in depth. There are mentions of him having been an alcoholic, and at one point was a danger to May and her mother. It could be that the game is pointing out these issues of the parents because May was genetically predisposed to them. After all, May also has anger issues, as it is revealed that she violently beat somebody up in the past and as a result started seeing a therapist who suggested she write down her feelings in a journal. This conversation with B is important in terms of understanding May's behavior, and it also finally explains why she dropped out of college. She says she can no longer see things as organic, describing people and other things as simply shapes. It could mean that she was suffering something called dissociation, which is a condition that makes someone feel detached from themselves and their thoughts, almost as if they were looking at themselves from the outside. How they view the world can also seem distorted. May describes that in detail as she speaks to B, and I even thought perhaps the dreams she was having could be a representation of this distortion. This can happen if the person is under extreme duress, or if they have a very serious mental illness, but it can also happen due to childhood trauma. Though it's not discussed in detail, I do wonder if May's father had an impact on her childhood, as his drinking issue caused him to be dangerous. It could also cause mood swings and memory lapses, which are both present in this character. It is even purposely pointed out in a scene where May forgets about the death of B's mom. It could also be psychosis, which is when people have a lapse in reality, and it can be seen in more severe illnesses like schizophrenia and more serious cases of bipolar disorder. In a psychotic episode, people may have hallucinations and delusions, but I don't think May's behavior quite aligns with that. But the entire narrative really made me think about all of the above and how these kind of conditions are portrayed and how we use them in media, especially in video games, to gain a better understanding of them. I wouldn't call mental illness or emotions a theme because there really isn't a moral lesson to be learned here, and it's not a central idea, but as I said earlier, it's more of a motif that supports some of the themes. How these characters talk and behave is essential to the story, and also the heavy themes you do see in this game. I would say the dangers of holding on to the past is a dominant one, maybe even true friendship as a big part of this game is reuniting with people from your childhood. The story actually goes in various directions that I didn't expect with a murder mystery angle and a secret cult, but I found those things were not the strongest parts of this game. The characters really drove this game for me. The frustrating dialogue, the realistic emotions, the fact that I couldn't control control my character's behavior in certain situations, it all felt very real, and without all of those things, I do not think the story would have worked out as well. And even though there are some fantastical elements in Night in the Woods, I view it more of a coming-of-age story about a young woman with some problems who needs to learn how to function as an adult. And while mental illness may not be a main idea, the fact that the game does have an emphasis on it and expresses it through these characters makes it a title really worth looking into. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video on Night in the Woods. What do you guys think? Do you think May has bipolar disorder? What did you take away from this game? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more videos from moi, be sure to subscribe. Also read the description for social media links, and as always, see you guys in the next one.